Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to episode 2 of Villainous. Uh, so our first episode gave off a pretty good first impression. It was quick, it was very fast-paced, very witty, very fun. A lot of uh, snappy humor. Didn't really, didn't really waste any time, and, and I appreciate that. For a six-episode series for 11 minutes or so each, that's kind of what I would hope for. Um, while not everything was as amazing as it could be, like the voice acting was, eh, <laughs> wasn't bad, just was, was eh, <laughs> it, it was still overall very good. I still enjoyed it, and I'm definitely interested to see more. Um, so, yeah, we're just, we're gonna get into this. I don't really have anything else to say going into this because again these are probably not going to be very connected they're probably going to be the, their own little things um but just as a recap for those interested episode one the black hat organization are a group of villains who rather than going out and doing things for themselves they do it as a business for other villains they are hired by this lady named penumbra who wants to black out the sun because it would allow her to survive. She can't survive in sunlight. So they help her take on this hero named uh, Sunblast, I think it was, who his entire thing is, you know, sunlight. And a big part of this episode focused a lot on how the heroes clearly aren't super heroic they're not like these virtuous people uh we see sunblast in this is very much an asshole who enjoys beating on penumbra just because he can and he actively chooses not to put her in prison just so he can continue beating on her and it's really fucked up it's really fucked up um so it kind of makes you wonder who are the true villains here in a way um, or maybe even that the idea is there are no actual heroes and just everybody sucks. <laughs> Either way, it kind of made me think of the boys. So with all of that being said, we are just going to get into this and hope for the best with episode two. So let us do so. When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in... Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we're back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. <laughs> that was so unexpected, but so absolutely perfect. Like, I, I knew this was on Cartoon Network in uh, the countries it's in. <laughs> um but it's like i i just i wasn't expecting a wee bear bears cameo that was actually fucking hilarious and, and just it, it was just so unexpected and sudden that it just it it got to me and that's amazing <laughs> um this episode outside of not having penumbra <laughs> But in all seriousness, this episode was honestly better than the first. Um, it, it, it Because we knew more of the information on how all this worked now, on how the Black Hat organization like functions and how like the character dynamics are, they didn't have to explain that as much with the first episode. It allowed this one to just kind of go. And I think that actually helped. Uh, it was still pretty fast-paced, but it allowed... It's surprisingly enough allowed it to be able to breathe a little more and feel like its own thing rather than, you know, giving us all this explanation of how everything goes down, how everything works, all the character dynamics, etc., etc., as I said. 
So allowing it to just stand on its own, it did really well. Um, so the basic story is the Black Hat organization um, seems to contact. We do get this new information. They seem to. They are the ones specifically contacting those who need help. We see that it's not just what. Well, we kind of saw that last episode because we did see that Black Hat did contact um, Penumbra. But now we're seeing it for sure that it's like it's Black Hat is specifically going out of his way to find people to hire him. And yeah, they are doing so. They are glad to do so in a way, but he, he is actively hunting them down and using their um, desires and and sorrows and pains to be able to kind of manipulate them into hiring him. So we still see that kind of villainous attitude in that regard. So there's these ghosts, really cute ghosts, by the way, really cute designs, uh, living in a, a haunted house, basically, a living haunted house, which is always fun as an idea. Um, believe it or not, I actually did like Monster House, <laughs> even though I haven't seen it for a long time. Um, but we get to see that they're there and throughout the years multiple heroes and even villains have tried to destroy the place but it's never worked everyone gets frightened away and it that's a good thing because these ghosts use this house as a place to live they're stuck on earth after death and they basically just have to survive um and they need a place to do so so having all these heroes and villains who have tried to destroy the house scared away helps them. However, there's this one hero who supposedly has no fears. Um, I don't remember what his name was. It's not as memorable as uh, like Sunblast, but he supposedly had no, has no fears. He's kind of like this lumberjack guy. One of his hands is a wrecking ball which he affectionately treats as like a as a person basically um and he's the only one who wouldn't be scared away by the haunted house aspect of it all so they agree to work with black mass to hire him and so of course our main trio are sent out uh the doctor keeps 505 in the ship though worried that you know he wouldn't be good for this kind of mission while he and dementia who keeps stealing his wallet in this episode like that's a recurring gag and it's like okay apparently she's really good at it too because he never realizes when she does it um so they um go in meet the ghosts and plan everything out the hero comes and they have to try and scare him but nothing's working the doctor had thought of something when they got the mission, though, and it's like, the only thing this guy's probably scared of is whatever took his hand. It, like, Captain Hook syndrome. Like, that's blatantly mentioned. And so it's like, okay, so the, the one thing that scares him is whatever that's going to be. And pretty much the instant the doctor was ordering 505 to stay on the ship, it's like, oh, yep, okay, that's the solution. <laughs> it was a bear. <laughs> It was a bear. 505 is going to, like, it feels weird to say something like save the day, but he's going to save the mission for them. That that was very clear. Very clear. Um, but it, it was still fun getting to see how it got to that point. Um, getting to see the hero, like, smash through and not be scared by anything. Just And, and seeing, like, the flashbacks of, like, the, the little cutaway gags. It's like, those were interesting because it's like, cutaway gags are like a a, a, com a comedic uh, gag used in animation um, with shows like Family Guy and stuff. And so because of the shows that I've often seen them with, I've not really been a huge fan because I hate those shows. But it's like, I like, I kind of dig the way that they're used here. 
They're only used, like, I think two, maybe three times. And every time, it, they get progressively more and more insane on, like, what it's going to be. Um, let me see if I can find them real quick here. Because I, I remember what the second and third time was, but I, I'm not 100% what the first time was. See if I can find them real quick. Oh, yeah. So the first time, there's a mosquito while he's sleeping, and he uses the uh, wrecking ball hand to kill it while it's on his nose, you know, kind of smashing his face at the same time. The second time, he's trying to go through airport security, and they're trying to take the wrecking ball off his hand, thinking it's like a tool. And he's just yelling, it doesn't come off. And the third time we see it, he's sitting there seemingly lonely. It looks like he's been kicked out. Like looking at it here, uh, there's a bunch of suitcases. There's a bag that says Barry's makeup on it. He's looking really sad. It looks like he's been kicked to the curb. So maybe like his partner kicked him out or something, something like that. Um, but he looks really sad. And then there's this cat who, that pops up. He looks over at the cat, uh, smiles like he's going to pet it. And then it cuts back and you see him looking sheepish as there's the ghost of the cat hissing at him. That is a really funny joke. It was really well done. It was well handled. And it it's clear that the other two times they did the cutaways were kind of building up to that. Building up to that joke, building up to that reveal. And, and, and it was just, it was well done. It was really funny. And then, like, you see, like, the past him when he sees uh, 505. You see, like, oh, yeah, he was this big, strong, happy hero. He would save these animals, uh, drain magma so it doesn't, like, overflow onto this village. And everything but then when he was petting a bear the bear happened to bite onto his hand and bite it off causing him to need the hand and so that's why he has that uh fear his only fear it, it's just it's well done it's really well done and again going back to the designs of these ghosts because i just kind of skipped to a part in the episode where it is these ghosts have great designs like the main girl is like just you're really kind of cute, but kind of spooky looking ghost girl. Um, has the messy hair covering one side of her face and everything. Then you have this other girl who's more like Casper looking. Like the ghosts in Casper, the friendly ghost. You have this one who's wearing like a, uh, f a, a, a wide brimmed hat with a flower on it. And a long coat and dress underneath. Has like long... Uh, kind of poofy hair there's this one who has like gremlin ears and a like a little paper boy cap and a bow tie like they all have these really unique cool designs and i love that it makes them feel like characters and it's kind of it kind of carries over from stuff that i talked about in the first episode on how that these characters feel like characters they they actually have something to them they're very simple in a lot of ways, but they're really well done, and I, and I really enjoy it. So I, I I really have to praise that aspect of things. I I just do. Um, and yeah, this episode is just it's fun. It's funny. It's really entertaining to watch and. Again, that ending joke with we the wee bear bears is just it that just sent me. <laughs> that was so unexpected and so just extremely funny. Um, I almost kind of wonder if in the original, since the original is in English, if they did actually get the same voice actors from We Bear Bears to reprise their roles. That would be amazing if that was the case. Um, 
but yeah, I really enjoyed this. Uh, tell me in the comments, though, what you thought of this episode of Villainous, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.